the time has come to talk of many things, but specifically classic techniques used in Foley recording and a couple of recipes to make sound effects. We'll start with the techniques, mics, noise, and layers. Mic choices, super directional is best and in order, shotgun or low bar pattern, followed by super cardioid, cardioid, and then omni. Do not use omni unless you have no other choice. Condenser mics are going to allow you to record quieter sounds, but will pick up more ambient bleed and are subject to the proximity effect. Dynamics will allow higher volume sources or indoors can pick up some very quiet sources very close to the mic, but can only record about one foot in front of the mic itself. And remember, everything you record will almost always be mono, not stereo, mono. In terms of dealing with noise, there are a couple of techniques commonly used. There's noise gating. There is strict one pole filtering, usually low pass, high pass, or band pass filters. And it's usually not just one filter, but multiple filters in series to really create a brick wall. You can use subtractive filtering uh, in Reefer if you're a Reaper user. You can use a dedicated noise reduction program like Isotopes RX, but just keep in mind that too much noise reduction will create audio glitches in the resulting files. It's best to just record as close to the source as possible to get it as loud as possible without clipping so that you can bring it down in the mix later and not have to worry about increasing the volume and dealing with a noise floor. In the studio, there are a lot of techniques you can use, but the most common ones you'll use to really fit the Foley performance or the sound effects to the film are going to be pitch shifting up and down, changing speed, maybe just drawing something out a little bit longer than it normally is, but very small changes, using EQ, adding reverb, and layering multiple clips together to produce hybrid sounds or to create a thicker ambience or atmosphere. Layering in particular, also known as married Foley, is combining multiple sound effects, either performed Foley effects or combination of sound effects and Foley effects to create or enhance a sound. It's very common in situations like adding an impact to the sound of bones breaking or layering animal sounds and crossfading or changing tempos and fading between them to create new creature effect sounds. And of course, automating speed changes of wind ambience to create whooshing effects as you know, the jet flies by on screen. When layering ambience, make sure you offset the layers as we've discussed before. So take one track, have it start at zero, copy it, have the next copy start 10 seconds further in, copy that, and then have another one start 20 seconds in, and then eventually cut and sync all the parts to the start after you've found a loop point and have created that loop. Now, some classic Foley recipes. Uh, these are only the ones that will get you started because there are thousands and thousands of these. So first thing you will want to do, I'm only gonna go over a couple here now in the lecture because I've created a classic Foley techniques and recipes PDF that is available on the course page. It is detailed. Uh, again, these are starting points and guidelines. They are not perfect ways to create any given sound. You will need to tweak these and experiment and adjust to find what is best for the sonic characteristic you're going for. With some things, whenever possible, record the original sound and enhance it with EQ, pitch shifting, etc. Things like household objects, uh, animal sounds, people talking, footsteps, all of that is best to record with the original source. And keep in mind that traditionally all of these are performed in real time to the film. 
once more, you can be a frame off, especially if it's behind the visual and it won't be bad, but do try and keep the performance tight as you record. So cartoon effects, uh, we'll start with those. If you listen to the old uh, Warner Brothers cartoons, you'll notice that primarily the effects are performed on musical instruments or voices. Just go back, watch a couple of uh, classic Looney Tunes. I personally recommend What's Opera Doc. It is hands down my favorite uh, Looney Tunes episode. Watch those and note what musical instruments and musical cues are being used because almost all of it is instruments and for cartoons you can get away with that for things like creaks uh, old chairs that squeak when you move them or door hinges are perfect for a fireball you can blow on the mic pitch shift it use panning create motion and doppler shifts that will pan it across the uh, visible spectrum you can also layer fire sounds on it to add more crackle. Household objects are great. Uh, you can find all sorts of things like mixers, interesting metallic sounds on mixing bowls, kitchen utensils, um, random objects in your junk drawer, coins, cards, all of that. Record it. Um, also, some things you would not otherwise expect. What happens if you move something across a stone floor in your garage? What happens if you uh, move the ceramic tank lid on a toilet? It kind of sounds like you're opening the Ark of the Covenant, which is literally what they did in Raiders of the Lost Ark, according to several interviews with some of the sound designers. Uh, human vocal sounds. For these, you're going to want to use a large diaphragm condenser or a shotgun mic and record everything you can think of having a vocal performer do. Ooh, oh, ah, oh. <laughs> Laughing, you know, giggling, burping, farting, you know, making weird <laughs> type noises with their mouth, groaning, moaning, screaming, whistling. Anything you can think of that can be performed by a human using their mouth, record it. Uh, things like industrial and factory tools. These are surprising surprisingly hard to record. Um, I actually spent a summer doing that for MSU when they were constructing a new dorm and creating a soundscape of the project. It is really hard because the volume is all over the place. Uh, but power tools that you have at home can be easily recorded, but things like uh, arc welders or pneumatic drills are really hard to get well because there's going to be a lot of volume and there's going to be a lot of ambient noise that is a huge problem. Fortunately, you can find a lot of that stuff online. The BBC has a great collection, but if you're going to try and record those yourself, make sure you wear earplugs. Mic feedback can be really useful for sound design or occasionally you will have feedback occurring on screen that you need to provide sound for. Now, instead of actually using a speaker, you can actually get the same effect by holding up the mic to a pair of plugged in headphones and recording that sound. You don't have to use a speaker. You don't have to blow up a driver, but the headphones will give you the same sound. You just have more control over it. Another source that will be very interesting is musical instruments playing or doing non-musical things, like tuning up or down, rosining a bow gets a really nice scrapey sound that can be used for a number of things, like uh, if you're grating things in a kitchen or if you're rustling papers and you don't want it to be really crinkly, rosin bow. Uh, tapping on the back of an instrument, stuff like that. For office sounds, it's going to be similar to household objects. You can record a lot of the equipment yourself. But nowadays, a lot of computers do not have much sound unless they're beeping or making error noises. So you will deliberately have to know how to do that. On both Windows and Mac, you can go into sound properties and play with the error sounds and just record those while you're playing with them. 
Uh, AC units are very good. Just remember you'll have to turn them down in the mix. Uh, printers, you know, my laser printer makes very little noise, but uh, it still is something to record. If you have access to a typewriter or a dot matrix printer, that would be great. To simulate snow, which might be a little hard if you are working with a film clip that has it in there and it's, you know, still kind of dry and not snowy yet. There's a good way to do this, which is that you can step on a mixture of cornstarch, which will give you some squeak, cornmeal uh, for grit, and just put that on a surface like concrete and then walk on it to give you that crunching on snow sound. Or you can get like a leather pouch or a bag and put cornstarch in there and then crunch it. It will give you a really nice crunching sound. Similar to computer sounds, we have tech sounds. And a lot of current stuff is pretty silent. You're going to want to use older versions of things like phones dialing, where you actually have touch tone phones and not just a touch screen, and it makes a sound. Uh, camera shutters. You know, my iPhone doesn't make a sound when I take a photo, <laughs> but my digital camera does. Vehicle sounds are going to be too advanced for this class. Um, I recommend using the BBC library or free sound because ideally you're going to need a multitude of these. You need interior and exterior in various positions, flybys, passbys, all of that stuff. Um, those I'm just going to tell you to go online and find. Water is the last thing we're going to talk about. This is surprisingly hard to record. For ambience, you want to start with a recording of waves from a lake or an ocean, uh, depending on what you need, and then enhance that with EQ. But for other things, if you have access to a kiddie pool, that will work best, and you can definitely record that outside or in your garage. Uh, the reason for that is that bathtubs and bathroom sinks always add reverb because they're typically ceramic or granite. They do not like to give you a nice dry signal. No pun intended. Instead of using a bathtub or a bathroom sink, try a kitchen sink or a craft sink if you have one instead. But for things like bubbles, get a straw, get a glass of water, blow individual bubbles or blow a stream. For those of you who are sax players, I know that you have used this to work on circular breathing. Uh, for individual drips, get a glass, get some water on your finger and let it drip from a wet finger into the glass and record that. For multiple drips, I recommend using a sponge and you can squeeze out just a little bit at a time and control the flow from the sponge with your hand. To get the ambient feel of a sewer or a cave, take multiple spaced out individual drips, kind of pseudo, pseudo random times, and find a 30 second loop of those. Copy it to multiple tracks and start the loop at 10 second offsets, and make sure that no two drips occur simultaneously. Then pan accordingly to get 50% left, center, 50% right, add a little bit of pitch shifting to taste, and add global reverb. You can either put it in a group, add reverb, and then bounce it, or put it on the master and then bounce everything down. Uh, then for rain, record next to an open window. Just make sure that the rain is not going anywhere near your mic. With all of these instances of recording water, I strongly recommend using a pop filter to avoid getting your mic wet. Just be careful with that. But remember, with pop filters, uh, you can get both cloth and metal. I would say in this case, go with the cloth pop filter. But these are just some easy suggestions. We will look at these much more in detail after you have your cue sheets done. And then we will take a look in class at how to create some of those so I know what I have on hand and what I have to go and make a run to the grocery store for.